Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to create a cool neon photo manipulation effect. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.18 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. <music> Before I dive into today's tutorial, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. I have tons of free software tutorials on here as well as my GIMP book of layers and free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can check out any of my Skillshare classes by visiting gimpschool.com and you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. You'll find all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here is the photo I'll be using for today's tutorial. I just clicked on the free download button here and I went with the original size which is a pretty large file size. And here is my final composition. Let's dive right into this tutorial. So we'll start by opening up our photo into GIMP. So I'll go to File, Open Recent in my case and I'll come over here to this photo. I'm gonna convert this to GIMP's native sRGB color space. The first thing I wanna do is add that shape, which we're gonna to convert to a neon shape. So to do that, I'll grab my paths tool over here in my toolbox, and I'll hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel. And because this is in a slightly different perspective, she's not facing completely straight on, I'm gonna to have to draw this in perspective. So I'm gonna draw the entire triangle here, like so have it come up right above her nose, and then hold control and create a union. So here we have our path shape. You can always tweak this by dragging the nodes. So maybe we'll drag this back a bit and drag this node up a bit to about right there. So once you know where you wanna place your path, you can hold control and zoom in with the mouse wheel. What you'll wanna do is add nodes here. So I'll hold the control key and I'm going to click wherever I wanna add a node Come over here, click, we're pretty much just adding nodes wherever the path is intersecting behind the subject. And then to delete this line segment, we're gonna hold Control Shift, that'll bring up a minus sign, and then we'll click right on that line segment. And now that segment is gone, so I'll hold Control, zoom out a bit. Let's actually move this slightly over. So there is our shape. Now that we have our shape, let's convert it into a neon object. This is going to be a multi-step process. Don't worry, it's super easy. So I'll come over and start by creating a new layer over here in my layers panel. And I'll start by creating a new layer named Stroke. Fill this with transparency and click OK. For this step, we're going to make sure our foreground and background are set to black and white. You can click that little icon to reset. And then I'm going to flip these using this little arrow. So white is our foreground color. I'll come over to our Paths tab. Here is that path we just created. I'm going to come down here and click to stroke the path. So that'll bring up the Stroke Path dialog. For this first stroke, go with a solid color. And I'm gonna change the line width of this to a smaller line width, so I'll go with five pixels for now. And Line Style, just make sure this is set to Line. And I'll click Stroke. So that will give us a pretty thin white line there. Let me hit the M key to grab my move tool to get rid of those paths. So you can see what our shape looks like right now. Let's come back to our layers panel. We're gonna create another new layer. And I'll name this Neon Stroke. Fill it with transparency and click OK. This one we're going to move below the original stroke layer and come back to the Paths tool or the Paths tab, I'm sorry. Now you wanna change the foreground color you have right now to whatever color you want the neon to be. In this case, I went with a pinkish color. So I pretty much just dragged my mouse into the top right corner and I just played around with the slider until I got that pink color I like. You guys can go with any of the colors you like here and I'll click OK. Once you have your neon color, we're going to once again stroke this. This time I'm gonna make this a thicker line. So I went with 15 for mine. You guys can test out whatever sizes you want and I'll hit stroke. So we'll come back over here to the layers panel. If I hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel, you can see we have two paths right now, two strokes. One is the pink and it's larger than the one in front of it, which is the white. I'm actually going to come over here and duplicate this neon stroke and we'll click and drag this below the original. So now we have two of these neon stroke layers. And first what I wanna to do to create my neon effect is I wanna add a Gaussian blur to this. So I'll go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I can hold control and zoom in a bit if I wanna 
closer look at this. And I'm just going to turn up the size on here. Maybe I'll go with 15 for this first one. I do have this little chain icon linked right here. So I'll click OK. And we'll do the same for the layer below. So we'll go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. We're going to blur this one differently based on the first blur we did. So we want this one to look like almost the neon tube or that first layer of light coming off the neon tube. So we probably don't want this one to be blurred as much. We do need it to have a bit of structure. So you can see that we can see the original shape of this. Maybe I'll go up to around five and I'll click OK. So hold control and zoom out. You can play around with the order here to see which one you like better. In this case, it pretty much looks the same right now, so we'll keep it that way. Hold control, zoom out with my mouse wheel. To make things easier later on in this tutorial, I'm going to add all these to a new layer group. So I'll click to create a new layer group. We'll drag this up to the top. And now we'll click and drag each one of these into the layer group. And we'll double click and just name this Neon. For the next portion, I'm going to start working on getting some of that neon light looking like it is reflecting onto her skin or basically shining onto her skin. So we're going to be adding ambient light to our subject. To do that, I'll come over here to my channels tab. And what I like to do is play around with the channels here. So I'm just going to hide the various color channels and see what I can come up with. I want to come up with something that's closest to the color I'm using. So it's not going to be exact, but it will be pretty close. So in this case, if I use the red and blue channels, you could see that looks pretty close to the pink we're trying to use here. So I'll go with that color. I'm now going to come over here to the layers panel and hide the little neon layer, the layer group here. And now I'm going to go to layer new from visible. That will create a new layer and I'm going to drag this outside the layer group. So there it is. Now I'm going to come back over here to the channels tab and I'm going to show that channel that we hid before. And now I'll come back to the Layers tab here, and I'll unhide the Neon Layer group. And now I can tweak the visible layer we created from hiding those channels. So I'm going to change the color of this by going to Colors, Hue Saturation. And now I can just tweak the hue until it matches that pink that I've been using, or just the pink that I want to use. So in this case, I'm going to shift that to the left a bit. I'll turn up the lightness as well. And I'll also turn up the saturation. And you can always come over here and hide that layer to see the original color of your neon. So I'll unhide that again. You might have to tweak this later, which is fine. But this looks good enough for me, so I'm going to come over here and click OK. So now, of course, we don't want this whole composition being pink. So I'm going to have to add a layer mask. So I'll do that by clicking on the layer mask icon here. And we'll set this to black full transparency and click Add. So that will hide everything for now. I'll hit the P key on my keyboard to grab my paintbrush tool. Let's decrease the size of this. Not that much. And then I'm also going to make sure I have the hardness set pretty low here. So a nice soft brush. We'll come over here, make sure our colors are set to black and white and switch over to white. So painting white on here. Wherever we want there to be neon light shining on our subject. So maybe on the hair right here a little bit. We don't want to overdo it, of course. And I'll increase the size of my brush. Like that. So this effect is a bit too strong right now. What I did is I came over here and I tested out various layer modes. The one I liked for this particular color was the soft light layer mode here. So I like the way that looks. You can also click on the layer mask. And if you want to soften this up, you can go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And if you are on that layer mask, this will soften up the layer mask and help to sort of blend the edges. And I'll click OK. I'll perform a couple of last tweaks here just to get this the way I want it. So this part is totally optional for you guys. But what I'll do first is I'll darken the background and then I'm going to basically brighten up the subject of the photo to help her stand out more. So I'll do that by coming down here to the original photo and I'll duplicate that. And then I'll go to Colors, Levels, and I'm just going to adjust my levels to make her darker. I'm really looking at the background here. We're also adding contrast. 
That looks pretty good, so I'll click OK. Now I want to get rid of some of the coloring going on here just so it doesn't stand out quite as much. So I'll go to Colors, Saturation, and I'll turn down the saturation a bit, like so, and I'll click OK. So now we'll come back down here and we'll just move that layer below the original. And now we need to add some contrast here. So I'll go to Colors, Levels. We don't want to do this one quite as much as we just did the last layer there. But I do want to add some contrast. Let's turn this up a tiny bit more there. And I'll click OK. So now what I'll do is add a layer mask to this. So I'll click the new layer mask icon here. And once again, we'll go with black full transparency and click add. Now I'll hit the G key on my keyboard to grab my gradient tool. And with my color still set to black and white here, I'm going to make sure my shape is set to radial. And then from the center of her face, I'm just going to click and drag this gradient outward. And I think this is backwards, so I'm just going to flip the gradient. So what we're trying to do is brighten up the subject's face here. That looks pretty good, so I'll hit the Enter key. And I do want to darken that background a bit more, so I'll come back to Colors, Levels while I'm on that bottom layer there. You can always simply drag in the Output level slider, so just drag it down. And that is clamping the whites and making them darker, essentially. So there's a before and an after, and I'll click OK. And finally, if you want to minimize this effect a bit, you can come back over here to the pink layer and just turn down the opacity of this layer, and that will help that blend in. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.